Now I've been contracted by Bicycle Network to cover off some of the important things to consider while riding the Great Victorian Bike Ride this year. Now topics include pacing yourself, hydration, dealing with hills, country roads, riding in bunches and of course riding on unsealed roads. Now around 30% of the riders attending the Great Victorian Bike Ride are children. So at the end of this video I'm also going to give some important tips to teachers that are looking after their students. Now remember that the Great Victorian Bike Ride is run over nine days of which you'll be riding for eight of them. You see there's a rest day in the middle and one of the biggest things you can do to make it successful is in how you pace yourself. Now on the first day everyone's excited to get started and sometimes that enthusiasm makes people ride the first few days flat out. Now this is not a problem if you're used to riding hard for seven days. But if you aren't, you might find that after day four you'll be struggling a bit. Now not only that, you've got another four days to go. So I recommend that you consider taking the first few days easy and then ramping it up for the rest of the event. Now even if you do pace yourself, you may find yourself having a bad day. Now that's okay. If you feel nauseous, faint or ill, consider taking the SAG wagon or contacting the event assistant phone number found in your rider's pack. And the last thing I wanted to cover off is to remember to ride within your limits. Take regular breaks, eat even if you don't always feel like it and drink regularly. I'll be covering off food and hydration in the next topic. In the morning, make sure that you eat a good portion of low GI carbohydrate. Now remember, carbohydrates are the food that fuels our riding. So foods like muesli, porridge or brown bread are really great choices. It's also really important to take some additional food with you as well. Now you'll want to choose foods that are easy to digest and have a carbohydrate component in them. Bananas are excellent. Now if you prefer, you can also supplement some of this food with sports drinks. Now there's going to be plenty of drink stops along these rides, but it's important to start out in the morning with both your drink bottles full. Now if you want, you can put a sock around your bottles to keep them cool. Now it looks a little bit daggy, but you will drink more water when it's cool and refreshing. Now the amount of water you drink depends on your physiology. You only need to replace the water that you lose through perspiration and breathing. So on the cooler days, you'll be drinking less. Well, on the hotter days, you'll be drinking more. And if you're using food rather than sports drinks as your primary source of carbohydrate, then I would recommend that you stick with just water in your drink bottles. A good way to test your hydration is to look at the color of your urine. And if it's dark yellow and very smelly, you need to drink more. If you're going to the toilet a lot, and it's clear, then you're drinking too much. Now if this is all sounding a little bit confusing, here's a simple rule. If you get thirsty, then you aren't drinking enough. But don't drink too much that you need to go to the toilet every 30 minutes. And eat before you get hungry. Okay, to finish off, nutrition and hydration is a really personal thing. So use your training rides as experimentation and have your nutritional plan sorted and tested well before you get on the ride. So now we're going to talk a little bit about hills. Hopefully during your training you've included some hills as this year's event does have some big hills in it. And here are two tips. Be aware that some riders will really slow down on big hills both going up and down. So if you are passing them make sure you give them plenty of room while being respectful to other road users. Now the other thing is to gear down to the easiest gear before you start the hill. There's nothing worse than stalling your bike on a climb because you're over geared. And it's also bad for your bike to change gears under heavy loads. Country roads. Now don't be lulled into a false sense of security. Country roads are often quiet, but it's still very important to keep left at all times. Now do not ride on the right hand side of the road and this is especially important 
when the roads are windy or when there are crests and you can't see the traffic coming towards you. Now a good idea is to call car up when there's a car in front of you and car back when there's one behind you. Now I know this gets a little bit tedious but it does help keep everyone safe. Now while we're on the subject of country roads you will encounter some unsealed roads this year. So carry a spare inner tube and pump at all times and know how to swap out your inner tube if you do have a puncture. And look out for potholes and uneven surfaces and warn other riders about them. Now finally, consider using more robust tyres. While most mountain bikes and hybrids have fairly heavy duty tyres, if you are riding a racing bike, then consider a tyre like the Continental Gator Skin, which is my personal choice of tyres rather than a light racing tyre. Now I teach a lot of people to ride in bunches and the rules are always simple. Always ride within your ability and never overlap wheels unless you're a very experienced rider. Now I like to sit a little to the left or the right of the wheel in front of me and that way I can move around the rider if something happens rather than straight into the back of them. Now hills are the other area to be very careful of. Now some cyclists will drop back a little when they stand up. Now the two other important things to remember is to look ahead in a bunch so that you can react to what's about to happen. And if you are riding at the front of a bunch, it's your responsibility to direct the bunch around big potholes, uneven surfaces, and warn riders when you're about to stop. Now when riding in a bunch, make sure those calls are being passed down so the other riders know as well. Along with the classic car back and car up, the two most common calls are stopping and slowing. Now we're almost there and I've got one final tip and this one's for the teachers. Now make sure that the students that you're looking after have phone numbers on them for both you and the parents that are riding. Now this helps the support staff get in contact with the students' right contact people if they've involved in an accident. And this is not only a great tip for anybody riding this event, we call it the ICE number or the in case of emergency number. So that wraps it up and I hope these tips help you have the best time while riding the Bicycle Network's Great Victorian Bike Ride this year. And don't forget to visit our website, it has a heap of fantastic tips to help you with your riding.